We're on a road trip heading down the Pacific coast of Costa Rica. Last week we checked out the cute surfer town of Dominical. And this week we're off to the Osa Peninsula to wild camp at Playa Colorado, near the remote Cabo Matapalo village. An off-grid eco-village world famous with surfers. Next week we'll cross the gulf and dive into the Pavones and Punto Banco towns in the southernmost region near Panama. Welcome to the Osa Peninsula. This week we see so many macaws and monkeys and even have a sloth neighbor for a whole morning in a tree next to our van. We watch the surfers at Playa Pan Dulce in Matapalo and enjoy the daredevil pilots landing near the beach in Puerto Jimenez. We will talk about the Corcovado National Park. There's lots to see and do in the Osa Peninsula so let's dive in. Our first stop in the Osa is the town of Puerto Jimenez. Besides offering some accommodation options and restaurants, you'll also find a major grocery store. You can fill up on gas, catch a ferry in the harbor, or hop on a flight. The BM supermarket is a good place to provision for your stay, as this is the only place in the area to get groceries. Stock up on fruits and veggies, snacks, drinks, ice. We even got a camping stove and a cute hat. It's a long drive from the turnoff leaving the Pan American Highway to Puerto Jimenez of about an hour and a half. We happily plopped down at this oceanfront restaurant and enjoyed the waterfront scenery and the small planes landing next door, barely missing a beach landing each time it seemed. We then drove to our new temporary home, taking a whopping 45 minutes to drive the few miles from the port town to Playa Colorado. One of several secluded beaches strewn along a vast and mostly uninhabited expanse of perfect coastline. If you haven't had the chance to go off the grid, disconnect from the world and soak up the sun, breezes, and salty air in an isolated destination like this before, it needs to be on your list. It's a priceless gift for the mind and soul, solitude surrounded by breathtaking beauty, an intense natural soundtrack, and time to really unwind. It was just our little crew of two people and three dogs, but we were far from alone. A very large family of white-faced monkeys would pass by to share our breakfast in the mornings.
The macaws would squawk overhead regularly. And we shared our campground with a slow moving sloth. who was hanging out in a tree right next to us. We almost didn't notice him or her at all. This peninsula is very special in Costa Rica in that most of the land is protected. The unique town of Matapalo borders the National Park of Corcovado. Blessed with a world-famous wave when the swell is right, Matapalo attracts surfers from all over the world. And the collection of properties caters to those looking to surf and also those looking for a genuinely remote place to do yoga, have a family gathering, or explore the Corcovado National Park. There is no electricity, so most rely on solar panels. And there aren't any shops or stores, so you need to bring your own supplies. A couple hotels have restaurants for an occasional meal, but most people come here specifically for what it doesn't have. We drove here in our van which was a challenge and risky that we'd most likely get stuck at least once. I highly recommend a 4x4 vehicle. So we touched on this a little but the Osa is home to the Corcovado National Park the largest in Costa Rica, covering 164 square miles and about 40% of the peninsula. If you've seen our other videos, I get to say this a lot because Costa Rica is rich with biodiverse places, but the Osa Peninsula is biodiverse magnified because of the size of the protected area, which means it's like a compounding effect for the wildlife and plants. It has several types of forests, including cloud forests, mangroves, and one of the very rarest, an original lowland rainforest. This means it still has its original trees and hasn't ever been deforested. It's the largest one of its kind on the entire Pacific coast of America and one of the last in the world. So just to name a few of the incredible creatures that you can see around here, all four types of monkeys found in Costa Rica call this vast area home, as well as the six types of wild cats, jaguars, ocelots, margays, oncila, puma, and jagarundi. Visitors are welcome in the park, but you have to go with an official guide. It's $15 for a day pass, or you can stay inside the park in one of the designated areas overnight. Since it's such a huge area, there are specific details you'll need to research before going, as there are different entrances, many different sectors, some places inside the park allow outside food and others don't. You can also coordinate a visit through many area lodges and hotels, including taking a flight and flying over the park, then landing in the Serena sector and having lunch, or by sea on a dolphin and whale tour. The whales visit the area seasonally December through March and July through November. It's not uncommon to see giant mother whales teaching their babies about life in the sea. You can reach this area by bus, plane, but I think that having a car is probably the best way to do it. You can also come over on a ferry from Golfito on the mainland of Costa Rica. Do they 
that was nice, huh, Lou? Yeah, you love that home. Join us next week as we go to the furthest southern point that you can go on the Pacific coast in Costa Rica, right next to the border of Panama. Thank you for staying until the end. This week's shout out goes out to Zen Maiden One. Good luck with your move to Costa Rica. And this week's password is Blue Whale. Send us an email with your name and the password Blue Whale and we'll give you a shout out in a future episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing. It really helps us when you like and subscribe and we appreciate all of you who have. See you next week. Safe travels. Get out there and see the world. Until next time. Cheers. <laughs>